Hi, and welcome to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Vice President of Athletics and Club Sports, Craig McPhail, and I know many of you are just like us, digging out of the snow. Winter Storm Jonas played a little bit of havoc with us, having to shift some games and make sure we had safe travel for folks, and in some regards, just give the kids a chance to go out there and play in the snow. For many of them, they'd never seen it, and certainly not as much as we had. So sledding was at a uh, utmost snowman building and probably a good snowball fight here or there were had. Listen, as we have another great week in Bobcat Athletics coming along, there's a few things I want to share with you. We've got some great stories today with our basketball coach and, and some teammates here today. We've got uh, a lot of things happening. Despite the snow, spring sports teams are practicing. So hopefully you're going to get a chance to get a schedule, come out and take a look. Basketball's got a big event uh, coming up this Friday night. I'm calling it dinner and a show. Come by the gym, get fed, come watch our basketball teams play. 5.30 and 7.30, we host Southern Wesleyan. Love for you to see it. I've got more to share with you near the end, and I'm gonna save it, but for now, let's get ready for this week in Bobcat Athletics. Welcome back to this week in Bobcat Athletics. I'm Sports Information Director Chris Parker with Coach Steve Harden and Junior Chad Hicks, the men's basketball team. Uh, Chad, you guys got Saturday off thanks to the snow against Pfeiffer, but let's backtrack last week. Career high 14 points of Barton. Just talk about that game. Uh, just wanted to get the win. Um, since I've been in my been here at Lee's McCray, we haven't won at uh, Barton, and that was a big emphasis the whole week of practice. You know, we had a tough first, uh, day before the game of practice, and I think that's what helped us get the win. Coach, Chad talked about the win being big. Four teams at 7-2 in conference. Carolina, just talk about not only that one at Barton, but just the conference overall. Right, uh, it's fun. It's fun times right now. We got a lot of good teams. Uh, the big thing about Barton, just like Chad said, uh, for us to get that off our back, that was the only team in the conference that we hadn't uh, beat since since I've been over the program, and so finally we've we've at least beat everybody once. So that, I think that's a huge accomplishment uh, uh, with us with Lee's McCray. But with the conference, wow, it's it's, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a dogfight all the way to the end. You know, with with us and Barton and King. You know, and then and then Emmanuel can be spoilers. You know, where they're not where they can't actually win it, but they can. Uh, it can hurt a lot of people being out there. So it's it's a war, and every game is uh is just do or die almost like playoff time. Uh, you heard Mr. McPhail talk a little bit about the snow, so you guys got to rest on Saturday, kind of take some time off, but a busy week, travel to Erskine tomorrow, and then you host Southern Wesley on Friday. What's, how's the team doing after having a couple of days off, and what's the mindset moving forward? I think we're still focused, and we're still ready to prove and let everybody know in the conference that, you know, being picked seven was a disrespectful motion to do for us. We felt like, you know, coming in, we were going to win the conference. And that's been our goal since day one, and that's what we need to do in order to um, make sure that we get where we need to go. Coach, we were uh, Chad talking about staying focused. Uh, you guys played Erskine here back in December, 62 points in the second half. What are you, what are you guys going to have to do to duplicate that success down in Due West? Um, I think we just got to keep getting better every day. Uh, just going back home with Chad, you know, we're strength in numbers like we've talked about all year long. With we got a lot of guys that can do multiple things. Sometimes it's 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 fun playing in our system. Sometimes it's really tough because we don't have defined roles. It right. can be different every night. So uh, a guy like Chad, I mean, we we've been pushing him. We've been on him pretty hard. Uh, been on him for a couple uh, couple days prior to to the Barton game, and he stepped up and and gave us what we needed in the scoring category. But uh, you know, we've been on him about being like Draymond Green. You know. Yeah. We're kind of we're kind of Golden State the way we play, and we're we're long on the wing, but we're small uh, uh, overall, and so we got to play tough. And I think he he did a great job of coming in and scoring points that we needed. But uh, but a guy like him just got to come in and be a uh, be an energy guy, you know. Right. Whatever you need that night, you know, we have different guys scored every night. So it's just if we need scoring, then that's what we need, and that's what we needed from him from Barton. But uh, to going on to different games, we just need guys to be locked in right. like that. And if we can do that, uh, I think we'll, we'll uh, have a good, hopefully a good night at Erskine. It's going to be tough playing at their place. It's always really tough. They shoot it better there. They play defense better there. Uh, Chad, talking a little bit about the toughness in Erskine, but we're going to take a, take a step back. I mean, freshman year, team struggled a little bit. And last year, you guys had a school record of wins. Uh, I mean, unless there's an epic collapse, you guys are going to break that record this year. Right, right. Just talk a little bit about your experience at Lee's McCray and as a Bobcat. Uh, it's been probably the most memorable time I've had in my life. Uh, from just like you said, my first year, I think we got seven wins, and then last year we broke the school record. Um, I feel like we still could have got more last year, but you know, 
that's why we play it. We're playing again this year to try to break that and keep going on. But I, I've enjoyed my tenure here. It's been nothing but, you know, learning experiences and making new friends and just a lot of memories. So really enjoy it. Um, Coach, Chad's <coughs> talked about his last three years, and we've talked early in the season about your senior class. How have they just continued to develop throughout the season and just leading this team throughout the year? Oh, it's been special. You know, we've had a great, great group. I think that's why we're where we are. You know, coaches need to need to coach a game, and, and you need uh, seniors to be leaders. And so uh, if coaches are leading, then you're not very good. So uh, I think our, lead, our, our leaders slash uh, captains slash seniors have did a great job, including Ch Chad into that mix. And, uh, and, you know, just a guy like him that's wanting to be a, a coach and, and to learn from it and, and go that aspect of it. Austin Anderson, same way, he wants to be a coach. Um, so he's been great just coming in for a short year that we've known him, you know, to come in and, and, and pretty much control the team as a leader. And I think that he brought that more than anything else. Naturally, he's a great player, but uh, but for him to affect that has been huge. And naturally with Cam, you know, Cam Red's been always your heart guy. He's an energy guy. He, you know, he's a guy that get on you and play hard. He, he leads by example. He leads by actions. And he uh, leads by his voice, too. And then Kendall's more of a quiet mode. Uh, but he's a guy that's been, you know, you know what you're going to get out of him every night by playing hard. Um, He's just he's just a little quieter, and, and he's did a better job of controlling his own emotions right. to, to lead the team. I think he's a great guy of just going and patting people on the back and talking to them one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. uh, Chad, last question for you. Um, coach talks about how you're, you're kind of compared to Draymond Green mm -hmm. of Golden State. Uh, there's a coach on your team who played at Golden State, <laughs> Mr. Jennings, right. uh, talking about your three-year experience, but you've had him your last two years. What kind of experience has that had, not for you, not only on the court, but off the court to play for somebody that was in the league for so long? Just a, a, a pool of knowledge. You can just ask him anything, and I feel like he can give you something, you know, something in return. Um, he's experienced as the best teacher, and, you know, he's been there, done that. So I can just, if I have a question, normally I'll, I'll ask. Um, but if I have, I have a question, something like, if I could work on my game even more, I'll, I'll uh, talk to Coach Jay about it, and he'll give me some answers. And it is very comfortable, very comfortable, and very reliable. So, All right. yeah. Coach, last question for you. Um, just you know, you heard Mr. McPhail talk about what's coming up for this weekend, and then you guys have a, a brutal stretch in February, so you got to take care of business here. But then uh, you had a couple days shuffled. Uh, with all the weather that's going on. There's probably going to be more in the future. So what, I guess what's the, the most difficult part as a coach is to kind of keep everybody on the same path with all these unexpected events. Uh, we play a little looser this year, and, and, and I relax a lot more than I have been here for a while. You know, I was pretty stressed for, for the previous years I've been a uh, coach here. So this team lets me do that by the by. I know that they're going to get stuff done. Um, I think actually this break has been good for us, uh, just the way that we've been playing. We we were different than most teams. We gave them days off. We told them to, to get away and, and to rest, but also if they want to get in the gym, get in the gym on their own. I think a lot of guys came down yesterday to get ready to go for today's practice, so that's good. Um, like you said, February is awful for us. It is <laughs> crucial for us to be getting as much wins as we can right now. February is almost like our November. We started, we started rough, and we're going to end rough with, uh, with our schedule. So uh, we, we've got all those top teams back-to-back -back and, and a lot on the road. So uh, with our five home games left, we'd love for people to come out and, uh, and, and be loud and proud in the Bobcat Den, and hopefully we can, we can get it rolling the rest of January and, and be strong in February. All right. As you heard from Coach Harden, only five more home games in the regular season for the Bobcats, and their next one is on Friday, and they tip at 7.30. And we'll be back shortly with This Week in Bobcat Athletics. And welcome back to This Week in Bobcat Athletics. It's been a couple weeks since we've had a show, so we've got quite a bit to recap, um, mostly on the basketball front and men's volleyball. Uh, men's volleyball is 0-2 right now, but they've played two tough teams and they performed very well uh, as they lost to Emmanuel in their season opener and then lost to Pfeiffer last week before the snows hit. They will be taking on King on Wednesday here at Williams Gym at 7 o'clock, so be sure to come out and support your men's volleyball squad. And then they'll travel to Belmont Abbey on Saturday at 2 p.m. Uh, as you've kind of heard, the weather did cause some disruptions. Both basketball teams were supposed to play Pfeiffer on Saturday. That got rescheduled until February 15th. Uh, but as you saw, the men's team did defeat Barton last week. Uh, the women fell a little bit short in tough matches. They were battling some injuries. 
Um, both teams will be traveling to Erskine on Tuesday, and then they'll be back here uh, against Southern Wesleyan on Friday, 5.30 and 7.30. Uh, men's tennis is actually going to be back in action. Uh, they're supposed to travel to App and UNCA. Both those were postponed. Uh, but however, they will be hosting Appalachian State here at the indoor tennis courts at 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, lacrosse seasons are still about a month out, uh, so be sure to come and support your Bobcats as we have home events on Wednesday and Friday. And until next week, uh, please be sure to join us on This Week in Bobcat Athletics. Folks, you've seen just another one of the many reasons why our student athletes here are such shining examples. Chad Hicks is a young man from Winston-Salem who has blossomed in his time here as a Bobcat men's basketball player, and Coach Harden's got these guys playing at a high level, and it's, it's just fun to do. When I talk about Chad, I, I got to mention we had 145 student athletes on the presidential honor roll from Conference Carolinas. That's almost 50% of our student athlete population. I know at one point in time, I told you a couple weeks ago, we had 42 young people over 3.75. What we're doing is having great success in and out of the classroom. We're in the community and we've got a great product. I know many of you have watched these broadcasts over the course of time and you've been able to come over to Williams Gym or Tate Field and watch us. And we're going to have plenty more opportunities, especially this spring as men's and women's lacrosse happens, softball, track and field, tennis. And I think you're going to really get to know, enjoy, and sense the kind of buzz that we've created here within the athletic department at Lee's McCray. I'm hopeful you're going to want to join the Bobcat Club. I want you to make an impact. Find a way to be a difference maker in the life of a young person. I'm telling you right now, the reward will continue to give long after they graduate. Be a part of something special. Join the Bobcat Club. Be a part of Bobcat Nation. Until next week, folks, stay good and warm. Thanks.